first guest on our podcast, and uh, he's one of our favorites. He's definitely the first one returning, right, Kelly? Yep. Mr. John. He was in such demand that we, we had, had to have him back. back. Yeah. So much going on. We got to hear more. <laughs> exactly. John Diamore, right? Well, okay. So you have five books. What are they? What are your five books? Rub Down's the newest one. And then the where did one. you start? So, what was the first one? Well, the first one was my memoir uh, that I really, that really started all this because when I wrote the manuscript for the boss always sits in the back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like Which I, I have said, on my shelf a, right there. I have on my shelf. That was a true story. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was, that's a true story. And it, it actually was something that took place uh, with members of, the fa of my family back in New Jersey. And when I was 22 years old, I was asked to be a part of this uh, scam that they were pulling off um, in Las Vegas in the mm -hmm. mid nineteen in the mid nineteen seventies, uh, so you can figure it out for yourself, folks. New Jersey Italian, think about it. Uh, but uh, you know, Mafia. They, were, they were much more uh, connected. I just did it yeah. because I was uh, sort of you know the innocent who just happened to be related to one of the people who was in charge. Well, okay, actually started in the 1950s and show that they are buying this place and mm. had it built and the things that happened over the generations so that over time, over 40 years or whatever it might have been, over 200 dead mafia people had been buried on the grounds of this house that would eventually lead to them being zombies. Um, <laughs> ah. Ah. So, uh, uh, good old zombie story. I like that. <laughs> so, so I, uh, you know, so I got to do that with that story. And the following year, I put out The Delivery Man, a non-mafia movie. Still had, you know, it was about a vigilante who went around uh, doing, you know, getting justice for people who had done wrong to innocent people. Uh, and so people read that, you know, because they all knew somebody, if they hadn't gotten screwed over in life in the first place, they knew somebody who had gotten screwed over in their life. So they, they sort of liked the delivery man. So they read the boss and they liked the delivery man. And, you know, they were, a lot of them were like, well, let me give this other book of his, a, his a try. And, you know, because it's dead fell is I, I wrote it in 13 chapters and I ended Zombies don't come in until the last three chapters. So by the time you get into the 10th chapter, you're already deep into mafia lore and mm -hmm. this story. And then all of a sudden things happen. And, uh, and I, I kid you not, folks, it is a fun, fun story. And it's not your standard uh, walking dead uh, drooling goo out of their mouth uh, type stuff. Uh, so if, for those of you who might like that. And, and then um, over the holidays, I had, over the last holidays, uh, 2019 to 2020, I had finished uh, uh, As Long As I Have Lips, yeah. which again, right. a completely different genre. I think we talked about that the last time I was on. Mm -hmm. your show. Uh, it, it's a romantic comedy. Nobody dies. Uh, there's no <laughs> zombies. There's no, no, no vigilante who comes to kill you. Um, so, uh, and it was just a romantic comedy uh, about the advertising industry. Oh, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, I was all booked to go tour for that. I was going to be in LA in April. <clears throat> I was a featured speaker at the uh, USC book fair that happens oh, every year. Yeah, I went to that one time. That's nice. Yeah, and I was supposed to be a featured speaker and I was going to be on a panel of, of things uh, and, uh, and which was going to happen in April. And so here I was booking all of this stuff in January and February. And I was going to, from LA, I was going to go right to uh, New York and New Jersey, mm -hmm. where you could tell by my accent, folks, I'm very well received. <laughs> uh, so I would do a bunch of readings uh, there and had booked those. But in the meantime, while all of that was happening, because I couldn't tour and 
touring and getting in front of an audience, uh, certainly Kimbra as, as an entertainer can understand this. It's what we live to do. Well, you so, know what? That reminds me. I do want to bring up before we sum everything up our, our book, Kimbra. Yes. Tales of the Lioness. Right. So I composed, this is, I can't remember when, about 10, 12 years ago. I um, got 19 stories from women who had gone uh, through fierce battles in life and they overcame them with great courage. And so I got those stories and did some editing to each one. And Kimbra wrote a story and I wrote a couple yeah. stories. You did, great. you did a great job. John, I don't know if you remember this, but this was my introduction to you. You wrote one of our little quotes That's right. by the men and I pulled it up. I'm going to read it. So this uh -huh. is uh, John's quote in our Tales of the Lioness book. Okay. It says, women, I've lost my heart, my mind, a fortune, homes, careers, and friendships over them. Yet I long to be in an intelligent woman's company, life and heart. Life, oh. may, re life may teach us many lessons, but then there are women. Oh. I love that. It was perfect. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It was so Great polite. job, John. Yeah, right. nice. Hey, I'm a writer. I'm a writer. <laughs> That's what I do. You're good with words. You're good with My words. Last name means